Most Oregonians hold the environment sacred, and we do have a long history of being one of the greenest states in the country. But what if I were to tell you Oregon isn't quite the ecotopia you think it is? That your Oregon is not as green as it appears. In the past few years in Salem, corporations have successfully lobbied lawmakers to kill, weaken, or stall efforts to clean up the air, fight climate change, protect threatened animals, prepare for oil spills, and restrict chemical aerial spraying. Why? It comes down to money. Politicians want it, and corporations want favors. In 1975, Oregon let go of all limits on campaign donations, and since then, contributions have skyrocketed except in 1996, when voters briefly revived contribution limits, which courts quickly struck down. Today, it's one of just five states without any restrictions. While Oregon is only the 27th largest state by population, it's number one per capita when it comes to corporate cash. And per lawmaker, Oregon is one of the highest ranking states for contributions from industries with a big stake in environmental laws. They're hoping to influence policy and it's working. There is an expectation that I gave you $20,000 for your campaign. When we sit down in your office, we hope that your support will, will be there with us. So it often takes things off the table that really need to be part of the discussion because people live in fear of offending people that have very deep pockets. Lawmakers routinely do things that benefit their corporate donors. A local construction association gave $9,500 to Senator Elizabeth Steiner Hayward for her 2018 race. She opposed parts of a bill that would have required the association's members to clean up equipment responsible for the majority of Portland's diesel pollution. That idea was dropped from the bill that ultimately passed. Timber Interests gave Representative Deborah Boone $26,000 during her career. Logging companies, including one of her contributors, clear-cut so much land around a town's drinking water supply that the water became contaminated. Boone said she asked loggers to meet with residents, but residents said she did nothing to actually solve the problem. It's really alarming because you think this is the water you're drinking and you learn that the timber companies have been able to dictate you know, what is legislation being written and voted on? And it's been very frustrating. Union Pacific Railroad gave $1,000 to Representative John Huffman. At the time, one of the railroad suppliers was facing state pressure after hundreds of residents filed complaints about a chemical stench the supplier produced. Huffman ensured the company got off easy. All three legislators said corporate donations had nothing to do with their positions. While these individual dollar figures might not seem like a lot, when it's all added together, lawmakers took in $43 million in corporate money over the past decade. That's nearly half of what legislators raised. You're being influenced by the money versus what's the best policy. It needs to be resolved. Some of these things need to be resolved and they're not gonna be resolved so long as big corporations are are in this battle. After watching Nike founder Phil Knight write multiple million dollar checks to her opponent last year, Governor Kate Brown says limits are needed. When it comes to campaign finance, we are still the wild, wild west. This needs to end. But first, voters would need to change Oregon's constitution, and getting that change on the ballot would either take thousands of signatures from voters or action from the very beneficiaries of all of that money, Oregon's legislature. 